Retired General Philip Breedlove is here, former Supreme Allied Commander in Europe. Does it ever get old hearing that title? I get teased about it all the time, but frankly, uh, it was nice to be that for a while. <laughs> I can I can imagine. Look, there was a time, and, and maybe even the time that you uh, were the Supreme Allied Commander, certainly in your time in the Air Force before then, that the U.S. military was strong enough that our enemies didn't even bother challenging us because they they knew the result. It was a foregone conclusion. How did we lose that edge? Well, I think uh, to use some words you might uh, agree with, we were at one point much more able to deter in a conventional sense our enemies. We've always had a strong strategic deterrence, uh, but our conventional deterrence was very strong. We went into the two desert storms and, and then into uh, Afghanistan and our whole military reoriented to doing what we call counterinsurgency operations or coin. And so the tools of big war, the massive piles of precise weapons, non-precise weapons aided by GPS delivery devices, et cetera, et cetera, dwindled because they were not key to that counterinsurgency fight. We were developing ever more capable precise weapons, but because of their precision and capability, buying fewer of them. So through the years of primarily counterinsurgency operations, our ability to do what we're looking at now, that big conventional Article 5-like war, uh, has diminished. When you hear the, the data points that we just laid out, and I think someone who has your expertise could probably lay out a lot more, does it concern you? Well, we've been talking about this for some time, especially since uh, when I was a SAC here in 2014, and we realized that Article 5 conventional type warfare was back on the table. And we needed to evaluate our stockpiles, our capability, our training in order to be able to do that big uh, mass combined arms warfare. Um, a data point that you were talking about before, I can't speak to the other services, although I believe it is uh, much the same. The Air Force is now smaller and older than it's ever meant, been, meaning we have fewer airplanes and the average age of the airplanes is older than the day that we were born in 1947. So um, all of the services wow. have been through this uh, uh, sort of peace dividend drawdown and changing of mission. And now we need to refocus on what it takes to fight at a larger scale because Mr. Putin has put it back on the table. And if you remember, Leland, what happened when our speaker went to Taiwan, what China showed us around China, these kinds of fights yeah. are now again a concern. Yeah, I would argue that Chairman Xi also put this uh, on the table uh, to your point, 2014, uh, that's been nine years. Uh, you think about Article 5, and just you know, that's the, the part of the NATO treaty, an attack against ones, an attack against all, that you, you conceivably could, could end up in some kind of real force on force with what the military would call a peer adversary. But the last time we did that, right, was World War II. When I think about Pearl Harbor to D-Day, uh, was two years, five months, 29 days. And a big part of that was the U.S. military wasn't ready. Uh, at Pearl Harbor, even after all of the warnings and all of the understanding of what the Germans and the Japanese were doing at that time, uh, the U.S. military just wasn't ready uh, to fight. We didn't have the planes. We didn't have the ships. We didn't have anything. It was the arsenal democracy that created that. Given the speed at which warfare happens these days, it doesn't seem like we have two years, much less two months, to be ready for a force-on-force -force confrontation. And Almost if there was one, it might be too late. We've got some catching up to do. And even as important, if not more important, industry and the way that we manage industry and their ability to surge to produce these very exquisite weapons, it's not ready for that kind of acceleration into a big fight. And so we have to work with our industrial partners to create capacity. 
Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.